My name is Mike Wicks. Uh, I'm an amateur chef and I'm here with my friend, a professional chef, Angela Prosperi Porter, who's a Team Canada chef and uh, he's also a cookbook author. I wrote this fabulous book, Flavors. We're going to be cooking a uh, fish stew today. Uh, Angelo, tell us about the fish stew. Well, the fish stew uh, originates in a uh, Tuscan town of uh, Livorno, uh, which is on the west coast of Tuscany. The real origin uh, goes back to um, the fishing families and some who, uh, one in particular, who lost their boat and gathered fish from other fishermen and created this soup. <laughs> This recipe varies in regions. Some will make a broth ahead of time, some will not make a broth at all. Just throw, throw the fish in. But uh, if you are making a broth, there's a couple of steps. Um, first of all is to saute the vegetables. So for starters, always use good olive oil. Uh, so we're adding the vegetables. We're gonna add some carrot, very basic uh, flavoring, uh, known as aromatics, so which will add flavor and some garlic. I don't bother peeling it because this is going to be strained out. I just crush them with a knife and throw that in. So this is going to extract a lot of flavor. So once those are sauteed for, for uh, even just 30 seconds or a minute, then we want to add some water. And bring that to a simmer and then we can add our, our fish to that. So this is the halibut collar. So just to make it fit in the pot, we're going to chop it up and you can see there's a lot of meat on there. That will also contribute to the flavor. We're going to add the salmon head. This is quite a large salmon head, it'll almost make a meal on its own. Wow. A lot of meat left on the, on the collar. So on top of that, we're going to add the heads off of the smelts. We're going to add the heads from the mackerel. Now some of the herbs I have here are some fresh fennel. I have two different types of fennel. A bronze fennel and a green fennel. That needs to cook for about 30 minutes to extract the flavor. When the fish starts to break down, then you know it's ready. You don't want to cook it for too long because that will cause uh, the bones in the fish to break down and possibly make the stock bitter. So now that our broth has come to a simmer, a couple of um, very important things to remember. You can see that some of the foam now is starting to rise to the top of the broth. It's very important to, to take that foam off. That gives you a much clearer broth. So now we start to make the actual soup. And the base of the soup um, is the sautéed onions and garlic and parsley. They're known in Italian cooking as a soffritto. We start again with some very good olive oil. A uh, warm pan, not, a, not an extremely hot pan. And we take first the onion. If you add the garlic right away, the garlic's going to burn. So we want to cool down the pot a little bit with some of the onion. Then add the garlic and some chopped flat leaf parsley, the Italian parsley has much more flavor than the curly variety. So we're going to cook that for a few minutes and then we're going to add a little bit of white wine. Choose a wine that you would drink yourself. Um, don't use a very cheap wine. Whatever bad characteristics that wine has, when you cook it, you're going to end up with more of those bad characteristics. Cooking with wine, it, it magnifies any good or bad you have in it. So if it's not a wine you wouldn't drink, then you probably don't want to be cooking with it. So now the next step is to take our broth. This has been cooking now for about 20 minutes or so. And you can see uh, some of the fat has dissolved off of the, uh, the, the fish, uh, mostly the fat fish, the salmon and the mackerel. So we're straining that off, just taking off the top. And you can see also by the color that we have a lot of flavor in there. There's some body to the stock. So we need for this amount of fish, probably about between four and six cups. So now the next step, you can see the uh, sofrito has uh, reduced a bit. The wine that we've added to it has cooked right down, almost to a very uh, syrupy consistency. Um, it's gotten a little bit darker, so that tells you also that it's cooked. Next step is to add some uh, tomato puree. 
And what I have here is, is known as uh, passata de pomodoro, so like a, a strained tomato puree. It's so all it is is a tomato puree. So very ripe tomatoes used um, to flavor the soup. So we're going to add a bit of that. We're going to pour in some of the strained stock. And I've kept it hot here. So a little bit of uh, strained stock. You can always add a bit more later. And at this point you want to add a bit of salt and a bit of ground black pepper. So we're going to bring that to a simmer and now we can add the fish. So the fish we have here, um, the order that we add the fish in, of course, uh, very basic. We add whatever it takes the longest to cook, we add first. So in this case, we have some uh, chunks of halibut. Uh, halibut can be a very pricey fish, but these are pieces of the tail. So why tail? The tail is, it's firmer, uh, it's a little cheaper, okay, uh, halibut filet is a very sought after fish, it's a very, it's a uh, delicious fish, but it can be a little bit pricey. Okay, so now the halibut is about halfway cooked right now, so uh, we're going to take the lid off there and you can smell that now, you know you're, you're building towards a very oh. good soup. Once you start to get those aromas, each fish, each herb you add to it, is going to build another layer onto that soup. So next is the mackerel. So again, a very fatty fish, but uh, very flavorful. So these are going to go in next. And I'm putting them in whole, so they'll be much easier to take apart once they're cooked. While those are cooking, uh, I've prepared some, uh, some baby octopus. I've also prepared some squid. And I also have some smelts here. Smelts are, are very small fish, as you can see. And then the next thing we're going to add, the last thing, is the um, mussels and clams. So one way to make sure that mussels are fresh, you want to make sure they're alive when you use them. Uh, one way to tell, oftentimes they'll open up like that, but if, if you just tap them lightly, they'll close. These will take uh, a few minutes. The clams may take slightly longer than the mussels, but generally you can put them in at the same time. So we just kind of scatter them, and now the juices that these release will, will add a, a lot of great flavor to the broth. We're going to let those cook for a few minutes. So how, how do we know when, when the mussels and the clams are cooked? Well, when the mussels and clams start to open up, they're going to cook very quickly. I usually give them a minute or two. And the general rule now with the octopus, of course, don't cook it too long. So the squid and the octopus can now go in. We're going to cook this for maybe about two minutes. The little smelts also will cook very quickly. We'll put those on top. Starting to look like a oh, yeah. nice, authentic soup. With two minutes with the lid on, and we're ready to go. Uh, Tuscans. And Italians in general love to serve soups on a slice of toasted uh, rustic bread. So, and you made this yourself today? This is my own bread, yes. Beautiful. Yeah, so nice and crispy, um, fairly thick slices. This helps to absorb some of the broth and gives a little, a little more texture to the soup itself. So we're going to grill these. These are not going to take very long. Our soup is ready. You can see that the fish is cooked just by the color of it. The squid has turned white. The little octopus uh, pieces have turned kind of purple. And the mussels and clams are completely open. And the small fish are just starting to break up. The last thing we're going to do is chop up some more fresh herbs. I have a bit of uh, fresh oregano here, just, just out of the garden. If you have parsley, if you have uh, other favorite herbs, by all means you can use those. Our bread is toasted. Our soup is ready. Last thing we do, take our, our grilled bread, take a large uh, garlic clove, and it should be nice and crusty now, so we just want to rub the bread with the garlic clove, one for each bowl of soup, a little bit of olive oil on the bread. So the stew now, we serve right on top with one of the little fish some of the mussels, a little bit of everything on here. Okay, a little piece of halibut. Okay, nice, very hearty soup and some of the broth. 
So Angela, I see that you know this this you actually serve everything, the bones and everything, it's just everything's in there. Yes. Uh, purposely I left the mackerel and the small fish whole. There's as in larger pieces, mm -hmm. so the bones will be much easier to remove. They can be removed just in one piece. Right. And uh, that way the fish doesn't completely fall apart as it cooks. The moment of truth. <laughs> oh my god. That's amazing. I've been to Italy and that is truly, truly Italian. It's exactly what you'd get in it in Italy. Just absolutely fabulous. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. Couldn't say it better myself. Thank you so much. You're very welcome.